Hey guys, I'm Alex and this is Finally Functional. If you're new here, I'm making VR shoes. In this video, I did some testing where I compared carpet sliders to the VR shoes and I had my wife and a friend try the VR shoes out. So let's just get started. Let's hop right in. So here's the test I'm gonna do. You see down here, I have my VR shoe and I have a couple carpet sliders. I'm gonna compare how much force it takes to pull the VR shoe back versus pulling my shoe back when it's just on these carpet sliders. So I'm gonna wrap, I'm gonna put this around my ankle and put this here. And then my wife is gonna pull and pull my foot back. And my foot will be on these carpet sliders. So one carpet slider is below the ball of my foot about here. And then the other one is below uh, my heel. And then I will also do it with the VR shoe. So I'll be, I'll just have this looped here with the VR shoe. And we'll see what the, the difference is in the force that it takes between this carpet slider and this VR shoe. The testing was done with both my wife Miranda and I. For each test, we pulled back five times and took the average. As the scale was pulled back, it, the poundage would rise and it would just get to a certain point and stay right around about there. So that's the point we took and averaged. We did testing with the rug that I've been using in these videos and we did it with another rug that I bought and I, I bought it to do some testing with, but I ended up not liking that one very much. Here are the results. The carpet sliders took a lot more effort to move than the VR shoes with both rugs, but the gray rug was much worse for the VR shoes but the carpet sliders with the gray rug seemed to work fine. For the black rug, it took two or three times more force to pull the carpet sliders than the VR shoes. So keep in mind that slide mills use entirely different materials and a bowl surface, so I don't think the results here can say anything about how well slide mills can slide. Socks on vinyl or tiles or maybe some other material might work way better than this. Just more experimenting is needed. Would you guys be interested in more testing like this? In the next section, I'm gonna have a friend and my wife try the VR shoes out and we'll see how well they do. Keep in mind that I'm still experimenting, I'm still researching and I'm learning along with you guys. So I'm gonna show footage that might look bad or where things go wrong. I'm gonna be completely transparent, show the failures along with the successes. All that being said, it starts out rough in the beginning, but then I learn a few things and it gets better towards the end, in my opinion. So make sure to watch the whole section and watch the follow-up where I talk about how I'm gonna improve the shoes before you draw conclusions. First up is my friend Brody. I showed him how the stoppers work, like I demonstrated in the last video. I wasn't really sure what other advice that I could give him. I hoped that he would just pick up on it on his own or I would at least be able to see right away what he was doing wrong. He did okay with the VR shoes and did improve during our 12 minute session. There were spots where he seemed to walk okay and was able to continuously walk for a short amount of time. Okay, gotta stand up straight. It's kinda happening. Did you have to zombie walk it for balance or no? Can I bring it down? Not to run. Come on. Hey. There you go. That's really good. Right hmm. there. Okay. There were issues. And if those issues don't get resolved, then I don't think these VR shoes will provide a very fun experience for him. The first and biggest issue is that there were several times where he almost fell over. Careful. Oh. I have a plan to eliminate this problem and I'm gonna go over that later in the video. I didn't really notice this until later in the day, but I think Brody was relying on leaning forward too much to bring his feet back. There are points where he was, he was leaning way, way forward when I use them and later when my wife uses them. You'll see that when we lean forward, uh, we just lean forward a little bit, but not that much. 
It's much more about pushing your hips up against the harness to bring your feet back than it is about leaning forward to bring your feet back. I'll explain this a little more later. Another issue is that Brody said that his ankles were sore after using them and he only used them for 12 minutes. To make this better might require lowering the weight of the shoes even more. Right now they weigh about 700 grams plus there's the regular shoe which probably weighs 300 to 500 grams. So altogether it's a little bit over a kilogram of weight on each foot. So in the near future, I'm going to try to make another version, a slimmed down version of these VR shoes that doesn't require wearing a regular shoe. This should cut down on the weight significantly. Later, when my wife tries the VR shoes, she'll, she'll share her experience and if her ankles got sore or not. For my experience, after 20 or 30 minutes, um, my ankles don't get really sore. That's how long I've, I've used um, these VR shoes at this point. I'll use them longer in the future. But yeah, my ankles don't really get sore, or at least I don't notice them. I'm going to pay attention to that uh, going forward. And I'll share later on why I think um, why, why I think that is. I also asked Brody what his thoughts are on the resistance of the VR shoes. Do you think it'd be better if there was more resistance? Less. Less? Less. Hmm. I, feel like, I feel like it's... Difficult, you know, there's a little bit like a detent you have to push through to get it to start engaging And I think that's what I'm catching on when I give up a stride and try to start a new one Okay So the shoes require a larger force to get them started and this makes sense It takes more energy to get something moving the moving than to keep it moving He struggled a bit with long continuous walking and this might be a reason why so his experience might be much better if there was a motor or some mechanism that could just give a little kick in the beginning of the stride to get his shoe moving. So I'll keep this in mind going forward when I eventually add a motor back in. So we saw that several times Brody almost fell over. I'm thinking to fix that issue, a beginner should wear the upper part of the safety harness. And the, up, the hook up here, that's at my upper back here, will be attached to the support rig so that you can't fall over too far. And then once someone gets more experienced and more comfortable with the device, maybe they can take the upper part off if they want. Another idea would be to just not use this kind of harness, have one that goes up over your tummy a bit more because then it'll be also harder to fall over. I haven't really found um, a safety harness that goes over your tummy like like how the Catwalk C1 does. I haven't found one that I can buy that's like that. Or something like the Omni 1 has where it's a whole vest that goes over your whole torso would be really cool to use, but I don't know where I can buy something like that. So after watching Brody use the VR shoes, I came up with a little training guide and my wife runs through that training guide and she does better with the VR shoes. You'll see that in a minute. The first thing is to just practice using the stoppers. So for like a full minute, you wanna actually put your foot out in front of you and then bring it back pretty quick and use the stopper to stop your foot. And you wanna put as much weight on this foot as you can while you're practicing. So put some weight on the foot, bring it back and stop your foot, okay? So bring it back, stop. The next thing is to just start out taking smaller steps. So don't take huge lunging steps like this, you know? You don't need to do that. You can start out with taking smaller steps and learn how to use the device and then slowly take larger and larger steps if you want. Along with taking smaller steps, in the beginning, you probably don't want your foot going too far behind you. So as you're walking, just bring your foot right below you and then take another step or just slightly behind you. So instead of Again, taking really big steps where your foot goes way behind you like this. Just take small steps where your foot comes right below you and then you take another step. And then the last thing is to not lean forward to bring your feet back. Don't go like this because then you might fall over or it makes it harder to use the VR shoes. You want to push against the harness. So you want to push against your hips. So keep your body up and push against the harness. And then like I said, when this is attached via the dorsal uh, ring, then it might be easier because then you can push against the chest too. 
But yeah, you don't want to lean forward. You want to push against the harness. And one more thing I think that would help is if this rod wouldn't move around so much. So you can see that there is quite a bit of play in this rod. If it didn't move around, then it would hold you better and there wouldn't be any sudden jolts where if I'm like this and then I go forward, you see that it bends and then it starts pulling me back. So during that bend, I don't feel very much resistance. And then once I get to the end, it pulls me back and that's a little jarring. So this thing needs to be more rigid, held in place better, reduce the play. I have some ideas to do that in the future. Here's Miranda trying the VR shoes out. I had to resize them so that they would fit her smaller feet. And by the way, I will upload the entire videos I have of Brody and Miranda and leave links to those in the comments for this video just in case you guys are interested in seeing the whole process that both of them went through. So first I had Miranda go through those training steps. Use the stoppers, take shorter steps, and push against the harness instead of leaning forward. And I think she did really well. She stumbled once or twice in the beginning, but that's it. Going backwards, it's really awkward because you have no support right here. If I focus like on my shoulders as I go, it doesn't go as badly, but like it's... Yeah, the, with backing up, now you're, you're doing the opposite motion where you're relying on the back stopper to stop yeah, you. Okay. It's not, it's not a I'm curious, uh, try, if you can try closing your eyes at one point uh, and then doing it like you have a VR headset on. Her steps are much quieter than mine. There, there's like a slight decline here. Feeling different? A little bit. Okay. It feels faster, if that makes sense. You see that or I'm kind of used to it. Also notice like how you said like not to lean forward, it kind of helps to press your butt forward. Okay. Is he walking? Like try to push this. Yeah, and if that might yeah. <laughs> Running's not that bad actually. Try jumping. Okay, and it also. I asked her if her ankles were sore after using these. Mine's a little sore, but like it's not terrible. Okay. It feels like I just did like a calf workout or something. Like a full calf workout. No. Like how, how long would you say you could go on these? I could probably go for like another half hour, plus my minutes. Okay, that's a lot. So for my wife to use these, I had to make the VR shoes shorter. And in order to do that, I had to replace this piece. This is a little longer. Um, it's for from my version uh, that fits my shoe. And make one that's a little shorter and then put that on the VR shoe. Okay, and then it attaches, attaches uh, right here. And then this piece had to re be replaced as well. So actually do this little short piece that's where we placed it, so it was a little shorter. So just those two pieces, so this piece and the like foot flap thing here. And uh, oh yeah, and then the metal rods. So these rods that were only in length, I had to cut additional ones and cut them at the right length. So those two three printed pieces and the three rods, those are what I had to replace to make the shoe shorter. And there you have it. Thanks to Brody and Miranda for trying these things out and helping me put together a little guide for beginners. I am curious to know what you guys think. Are you guys okay with a little bit of practice being involved in order to use these things? I imagine there are people out there who these aren't, these just aren't gonna be good enough. They don't wanna practice or they just don't like them. And that's fine. I'm just trying to be as transparent as possible. 
After watching them use these VR shoes, I now recognize some issues that I've seen in videos of people using slide mills, especially the one where you're leaning too far forward. I now can think of several, case, several videos where I've seen that. And I don't think there are any guides from slide mill companies, like tutorials for beginners. If you guys know of any, let me know, but I wouldn't be surprised if those don't exist or if you only receive them after you've bought the treadmill. From what I've read online, it seems that slide mills also require some practice to use, but it doesn't. I think that slide mill companies should be more transparent about that, but that's another reason why I'm trying to be transparent. Anyway, the point being is these will require some practice to use. If you're not okay with that, then don't use them. But after some practice, they might be a lot of fun. Of course, I'll keep trying to improve them. I'll try to inch closer to that ideal where anybody can just hop into the shoes and use them without any practice. So I'll try to add a motor back in. I'll try to add omnidirectional support and make the algorithms better. So I'll keep improving them. I don't want to sacrifice quick movements to do those other things. So we'll see what happens. So thank you guys for watching. Next, I'm gonna work on making a better support rig. Like and subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time.